This is a picture test in practical neuroanatomy. You may use the video as a revision for the topic or as a self-assessment tool. For the purpose of self-assessment, you may pause the video and spend your own time to read the question and come up with the answer. Then, replay the video to confirm your answer by listening to the comments and explanations. Now I will deal with the spinal cord. Vibration sensibility from the knee joint involves which of the numbered pathways? First, let's identify the white matter tracts. One and two are located in the dorsal funiculus. They represent fasciculus cuneatus, number one, which is located on the lateral side of the dorsal funiculus, and fasciculus gracilis, which is located on the medial side of the dorsal funiculus. Three is a tract located at the periphery of the lateral funiculus, and it is the dorsal or posterior spinocerebellar tract. Four is located just anterior to it, and it is thus the ventral or anterior spinocerebellar tract. Both spinocerebellar tracts, they convey unconscious proprioception from the lower limb to the cerebellum. Five is the anterolateral system, lateral and anterior spinothalamic tracts. They are concerned with sensory modalities of uh, light touch, pain, and temperature. The dorsal funiculus, which, as I mentioned, com comprising of fasciculus gracilis 2 and fasciculus cuneatus 1, both are concerned with same modalities of sensations. These are proprioception, fine touch, and vibration. So vibration sensibility from the knee joint will be transmitted in the posterior funiculus, but whether it is transmitted in one or two, the difference here is that the sensations from the lower limb ascend medially in the fasciculus gracilis, while sensory information from the upper limb ascend laterally in the fasciculus cuneatus, because fibers are added to the posterior funiculus from the lateral side. So as we go upwards in the spinal cord, like here we have, uh, this is a level, uh, this is a, an, um, um, an upper thoracic level. So the fibers are added to the lateral side to form the fasciculus cuneatus. While the fasciculus gracilis originally carries sensations from the lower limb will be on the medial side. And thus the vibration sense from the knee joint from the lower limb will be present in the uh, fasciculus number two, fasciculus gracilis. Now this is um, the late uh, Christopher Reeve, uh, born 1952, died 2004. He was an American actor who achieved stardom for his portrayal of Superman. In 1995, Reeve, Christopher Reeve, um, became a quadriplegic after being thrown from a horse during an equestrian competition. He landed head first but his helmet prevented any brain damage. The problem is the impact of his 98 kg body hitting the ground. This resulted in shattering of part of his vertebral column. He required a wheelchair and a breathing apparatus for the rest of his life. Now the question here is where do you expect the level of the injury in this case and give reason. As I mentioned that there was shattering of the vertebral column including the cervical region. The head was protected by the helmet, but the body weight caused the uh, shattering of the vertebrae. It's the first and second vertebrae were shattered, and this resulted in injury of the spinal cord located inside the vertebral canal. Therefore, the injury was in the spinal cord at the above the level of C3 segment of the spinal cord. So therefore, he needs a respirator because of the paralysis of the phrenic nerve, remember the root value of the phrenic nerve is C3, 4, and 5, mainly C4, C3 and 4. So the, the phrenic nerve will be totally damaged if the lesion in the spinal cord is above the level of C3. And of course, the patient will have quadriplegia because all the corticospinal fibers are damaged. 
the ones that supply the brachial plexus as they um, um, are connected to the spinal cord at levels of C5 and T1. And so above the level of C5, the upper limbs will be paralyzed as well as, of course, the lower limbs. Throughout which regions of the spinal cord does this nucleus extends? And what information is processed in this nucleus? This nucleus is found at the base of the dorsal horn. Note that this is a section of a thoracic segment because of the presence of a lateral horn or intermediate lateral cell column and a narrow anterior horn containing only medial group of anterior horn cells. The nucleus is the nucleus dorsalis, also known as Clark's column. It is found throughout the thoracic and upper lumbar regions of the cord. The nucleus process unconscious proprioception information from the lower limb to the cerebellum. Its input is derived from axons ascending in the dorsal columns. Neurons in the nucleus will give rise to axons which ascend the cord ipsilaterally in the dorsal spinocerebellar tract. The dorsal spinocerebellar tract is uncrossed. It enters the cerebellum through the inferior cerebellar peduncle and the proprioceptive information that reach conscious level must reach the cerebral cortex and not the cerebellum. Thus, the fibers that are concerned with conscious proprioception, they pass through another pathway, not including the Clark's nucleus. So they pass through the posterior funiculus and constitute the dorsal column medial lemniscus pathway. Match the result of damage to each of the numbered regions. 1. Spastic paralysis on the ipsilateral side of the body below the level of the lesion. 2. Spastic paralysis on the contralateral side of the body below the level of the lesion. And 3. Is flaccid paralysis on the ipsilateral side of the body at the level of the lesion. Now first, let's identify the regions where the lesion is taking place. A is the lateral corticospinal tract. It is located in the depth of the lateral funiculus. B is the anterior horn of gray matter of the spinal cord containing anterior horn cells, alpha motor neurons or lower motor neurons. And C is the anterior or ventral corticospinal tract. Now spastic paralysis results from an upper motor neuron lesion Thus, either A, the lateral corticospinal, or C, the ventral or anterior corticospinal tract, could be involved. Now, because the lesion here in one, the lesion is ipsilateral. Therefore, the lesion is affecting A, which is the lateral corticospinal tract. Fibers of the lateral corticospinal tract have already crossed at the medulla, at a higher level, in the pyramidal decussation. Thus, in the spinal cord, damage of the tract will result in an ipsilateral lesion. Regarding 2, spastic paralysis on the contralateral side of the body, the lesion would be in C, the anterior corticospinal fibers. These are the fibers of the corticospinal uh, pathway that have not crossed at the pyramidal decussation that they constitute 10 to 25% of fibers that do not cross at medullary level, and they form the ventral or anterior corticospinal tract, the fibers will ultimately cross at segmental levels. So they cross at the anterior white commissure and terminate on anterior horn cells. So damage of this tract in the spinal levels results in a contralateral spastic paralysis, upper motor neuron lesion. The anterior horn cells at B are lower motor neurons. They are the origin of the motor fibers that pass through the anterior roots of the spinal nerve. Lesion affecting these cells, for example in poliomyelitis, would result in flaccid paralysis, ipsilateral to the lesion 
and only affecting muscles that are supplied by the segment affected by the lesion. Match the fiber bundles 1 to 4 with the nuclei 1 and 2. First, let's identify the white matter tracts. One is located in the dorsal funiculus on the medial side of it, so it is the fasciculus gracilis. Note that this is a thoracic level of a section, and this is indicated by the presence of a lateral horn of gray matter and a narrow anterior horn. There is no lateral extension for innervation of limbs. Now, at mid thoracic level and above, you would expect both fasciculus gracilis and cuneatus to be present in the posterior funiculus. Two is a tract located between the peripheral margin of the cord and the tip of the dorsal horn. It is the dorsolateral tract of Lisauer. Three is located at the periphery of the lateral funiculus, so it is the spinocerebellar tract being posteriorly located then it is the dorsal or posterior spinocerebellar tract. Four is a tract extending from the lateral to the anterior funiculus, and it is formed by the grouping together of the lateral and ventral spinothalamic tracts. Together are called the anterolateral system. Now let's deal with the first nucleus. This is the nucleus proprius. It is located in the dorsal horn of gray matter, just ventral to substantia gelatinosa, which looks a little bit lighter. The cells of this nucleus, they have processes, dendrites, that extend into the substantia gelatinosa, and they synapse with incoming dorsal root fibers. These are the pseudo-unipolar neurons, which are located in the dorsal root ganglion as a peripheral process and a central process. The central process enters through the lateral division of the posterior root. It reaches the dorsolateral tract of Lisauer. Fibers, they ascend or descend for few segments uh, before they uh, synapse here with the dendrites of neurons located in the nucleus proprius. These are unmyelinated or lightly myelinated accents of the lateral division of the dorsal root. Accents of the medial division of the dorsal root will pass through the dorsal funiculus of the spinal cord. Now, neurons comprising this nucleus, nucleus 1, nucleus proprius, they will give rise to accents which cross the cord in the anterior white commissure and they will ascend in the contralateral spinothalamic tract. So the input to the nucleus proprius comes from the first order neurons which are located in the dorsal root ganglion and the output from the nucleus proprius uh, pa uh, uh, constitute accents that form the anterior and lateral spinothalamic tract. Now nucleus 2 is found at the base of the dorsal horn. Note that this is a section of a thoracic segment of the spinal cord, as we mentioned before, because of the presence of a lateral horn or intermediate lateral cell column. And the nucleus is thus the nucleus dorsalis or Clark's column, because this nucleus is found throughout the thoracic and upper lumbar regions of the cord. And usually it is located in the base of the dorsal horn. Neurons of this nucleus, they receive fibers from muscle spindles and tendon organs related to unconscious proprioception from the lower limb. These fibers, they traverse the dorsal funiculus and terminate upon the neurons of the nucleus dorsalis of Clark. Axons of the neurons of this nucleus pass ipsilaterally and ascend up in the dorsal spinocerebellar tract to reach the cerebellum. Fibers of the dorsal spinocerebellar tract reach the cerebellar cortex through the inferior cerebellar peduncle.